Hey, how you doing? This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And I've been kind of cleaning my office. Um, I had to replace some of the plastic little covers that you put down under your chair so as it doesn't tear up the carpet. And then uh, when I did that, I had to clean out a bunch because I had to move some computers. I found a lot of dust behind the computer, so I cleaned that out. And then I was also cleaning off my computer, and I ran across this program, or a couple of programs, that you can use to monitor uh, air traffic. And let me just show you how you get it set up, and then I'll tell you what my setup is. So first you have to, let me go show you my desktop. Okay, down here are the two programs. These two programs are set up for the SDR Play SDRs. I got them off the SDR Play website and they're configured to work with the SDR Play 1, 1A, and 2, I guess. So you first you run Dump 1090 and that's kind of a universal program that will decode the information from the aircraft transponders that gives you location, speed, other conditions. And then, and this is, uh, is, this is it running right here. And there's the basic program itself will actually give you some information in a, like a um, spreadsheet format. This one, and you can see all the options that it's turned on or off. This one is just a front end for the other program. So there's no display on this program. So you got it running, and then you uh, let me shrink this down, and then you run virtual radar, which I've got running right here. And then you select it. This shows you just kind of general information about the aircraft and stuff like that, very concise information. But then you can click on this website and get everything displayed, which is what I had up. Let me go back to that. So you get this. So you get the map, you get the table over here with all kinds of information about the aircraft. These, ooh, look at there. That's 25, oh, I lost it. That was 25, that was 75 miles away. And I'll tell you why that was kind of exciting there for a second. Okay, so you got this running, it gives you all this information. Uh, it also will talk and, and say the information, which is what I turned off because I recorded this a half an hour ago and I left that on and I thought by turning my speaker volume down it would shut him up well it didn't so he was kept talking over me now let me just show you what I'm talking about so you come up here to this menu you got all these options hundreds of options and one of them is the audio announce details of selected aircraft or only announce details of auto selected aircraft the one it's selected so I have turned that off so that you can hear me I'll turn that back on Right now, I'll, I'll turn on announce details of selected aircraft. I'll turn that on. I'll close this menu, and then I'll select an aircraft. Registration November 2nd, 3-1 Quebec Sierra. Type CL60. Operated by NetJets. Call sign Echo Juliet Alpha 231. Route not known. So it reads all the information to you. So you could be doing something else and have the other option where it auto selects a aircraft and I don't know what, what the criteria is to auto select. I could try that. And it reads the information. Um, and then over here in the table, it gives you the registration number, the ICAO number, which is associated with the transponder, the call sign, the altitude, the route, if it gives you the information about route and then the speed. And the reason I'm using this again, I've used it before, I've done shows, is 
it's fall here in Florida and the leaves on the trees are starting to fall. Now they should have fallen a long time ago. They should have fallen like the end of October. Well, they are just starting to fall now and some trees are maybe 25% um, left as far as their leaves. Other trees are still 100%. So when receiving this information, which is at 1.090 gigahertz, gigahertz, it's a line of sight. So if your antenna can't see the transponder in the aircraft flying overhead, it ain't going to get this data as long as, the, of course, the aircraft is sending out data, which nowadays I think all commercial aircraft has to do this. So I think it was last February I did a show on this. It was the first time I did a show on this, and I was getting pretty good reception. I was getting about 100, 100, 100 miles, aircraft that were 100 miles um, I think it's measured on the ground. It's not measured directly to up to the aircraft. So if the aircraft is up pretty high, it could be longer. It could be further away. So in other words, these little icons here are where the aircraft is above the ground. So it would be the, the position of the aircraft is projected down to the earth. So it's actually further away. In some cases, especially like uh, this aircraft here, which I still registration November first zero four uniform whiskey. I'm still trying. Type three two zero. Operated by American Airlines. Call sign Alpha Alpha Lima eight six two. Traveling from KMCO Orlando, United States to KDCEY Ronald Reagan Washington National, United States. Pretty cool. Gives you a lot of information. Let me go turn it off. Otherwise, he'll be competing with me in the whole show. So let me turn that off. Okay. So over here, it gives you all the, all the information that he mentions plus more. So here's the aircraft number. Here's the uh, company that owns it, American Airlines. Here's the aircraft itself. It's an Airbus A320. It's a big aircraft. I don't know what the 214 number is. Maybe that's a sub number of a 320 and then it gives you altitude which he's at 29,000 feet and that's probably why I'm able to receive him even though where he's located from me I'm down here in this little blue dot there's a tree right there in a the way but he is probably above the tree line of sight so that's the reason I can get him there are many 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 more aircraft around me so I I still got a lot of trees with leaves I should be there's probably a thousand aircraft within this this circle right here of me because we got Tampa Airport here we got St. Pete Clearwater Airport here we got a little tiny airport that's line of sight two miles from me uh, it doesn't have a tower, uh, and it's all little personal or uh, private aircraft. So I'm not seeing those at all. And, of course, there's not too many of those up. But here, like I say, here I, I zoomed in. Here I am right here. And so I'm seeing this aircraft. I've seen him. This shows you how long I've been tracking. This is, I started picking him up down here, and I tracked him all the way to where he is now. That is south of me, which means the antenna. Okay, my setup. I'm using the SDR Play 1. Uh, my antenna is a disc cone antenna that um, is about 20 feet in the air. It's on the peak of my second story, my two story house. And I have. I have trees all around me, all around. Me. Matter of fact, I applied for flight radar website, which they will send you a receiver if you set it up and constantly have that receiver through your internet 
uh, send updates to aircraft. That's where this data is coming from in some cases. Not the way I've got to set it up now. I'm, I'm receiving it directly here. Um, but you have to send in pictures of your area, where your antenna is. And I did that, and I had to show the trees, and I said, ah, <laughs> you're not going to receive anything. Go away. So I didn't, I didn't get the receiver. Um, what else? So anyway, I'm hoping that as these trees lose the leaves, I get more aircraft. Now, like I say, right now, which I don't understand why I'm not getting more, um, I'm just looking at the window east, which would be in this direction, of course, and I don't see any trees close by. Now, I do have a tree uh, in my yard that is southeast of me, southeast of my antenna, and it's an evergreen. So it's, it's not going to lose its leaves. So that's hopeless. The trees that uh, are in other people's yards, this way, east of me, um, have lost a lot of their leaves. Now, then I have a tree that's no, in my yard. Actually, it's in my neighbor's yard, but it's right next to the fence. It's an evergreen, and it's northeast of my antenna. I have a tree in my yard that's directly north of my antenna, which sheds all its leaves, which right now it's got most of its leaves. So hopefully things will improve here. Now, this way I've got, um, I got a tree, I told you I had a lot of trees. I got a tree northeast in my front yard that will shed all its leaves, but it hasn't yet. Let's see, I'm looking out the window. No. So it's still got full foliage. I have a tree um, about this direction, about this direction, which is an evergreen, which is not going to lose any leaves or anything. So you can see that as the winter goes on and these trees start shedding their leaves, I will get openings in different directions. I don't know, I'm trying to think, oh yeah, I have a second tree in my backyard that's this direction. And I think, I think it's an evergreen. So I don't have much hope in this direction. Um, the trees this direction are about 30 feet from my antenna, so there is a little visibility south of me, due south of me. That's probably why I got this aircraft here that flew up that way. Now, I should be getting hundreds of aircraft because we've got Tampa International Airport, we've got St. Pete Clearwater, and we've got the little um, airport, I call it air park next to me. And that's probably where this aircraft right here came from. Because these are also symbols that kind of get you an indication of what the aircraft is. And you can see this is like a one engine little aircraft. And let me click on that. And I'll go over here and see he is, it's a private plane. It's a Cessna. Yep. That is coming out of that little airport which is only about two miles line of sight from me. And he's only at 900 feet right now. So I'm getting him and uh, he is right now uh, a little west of me. So there's, he's probably between the two trees that are on the west side of my property. So that's why I'm picking him up. He flew, he probably flew over me and now he's between those two trees so the antenna can see him. Like I said, for these transponders, which are broadcasting about one gigahertz, it's a line of sight. Your, your antenna has to see their antenna. Or your other words, you're not going to pick them up. So, 
I just wanted to show you kind of what I was playing with today. And, uh, and also, uh, I wanted to capture a video of the activity that I'm getting right now to see how it improves as the leaves fall. Let me uh, zoom out here. Whoops, out, not in. And see, we're not getting much. Now, back when I was demonstrating this program uh, in, I think it was like February or March, of course, all the leaves that were going to fall had fallen. And I was getting aircraft as far as 120 miles away, right up in this area here and over here. So that means the tree that's in my front yard, which will shed all its leaves, is blocking the signal. So that should improve. So anyway, if you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any, any suggestions for shows, uh, please leave me a comment or send me an email at trrs73 at gmail.com. Also, I want to thank everybody that's been using my Amazon store. As usual, uh, it's kind of picked up for the winter, especially uh, Cyber Monday it's picked up. So I appreciate that. I had a suggestion to get one of the new, new. It's a... Uh, upgraded version of the uh, the uh, Grundig radio with the Bluetooth interface. Um, there have been, up until recently, a lot of bad reviews of those, and so I did not get one. And this gentleman said he got one. He, he says he actually has three, and he says uh, they fixed a lot of the problems in that I should go ahead and get one now. So I'm going to uh, save up my credits that I get from your buying stuff from my Amazon store and purchase one of those for review. I'd really like to have one. I have um, the predecessor to that, which is the same. I think it's the same radio, but it doesn't have Bluetooth, and I don't know if it has RDS. So that's it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.